Hello everybody, and welcome as always to Wisconsin Whiskey Reviews. I'm your host, Brian, and today we're going to be talking about another international whiskey. Uh, this time a whiskey from Taiwan, from the only distillery in Taiwan. This is Kavalan Whiskey. Uh, this is the Vino Barrique uh, Special Cask. Uh, from Kavalan, otherwise known as King Car Distillery in Taiwan. Um, not much to say about this one, uh, just because there's not a big history to Kavalan or, again, King Car Distillery. They make King Car Whiskey and some other Kavalan whiskeys. Kavalan is the more popular brand that everybody knows, the more elite brand. Um, they make a Solist range of of uh, ex-bourbon and cherry casks and stuff like that that come in at cast strength, as well as this one, the Vino Barrique. They also make the Fino Sherry, and that one is a lot more pricey, but, um, you know, King Car Distillery itself, and that's where the confusion comes as far as where the distillery is. It's actually King Car Distillery. Now they, you know, on the building they have Cavalon and stuff like that, but, um, they're getting really famous really quickly. They make a really good whiskey, folks, okay? Uh, whether, you know, no matter what people want to think about certain parts of the world or certain ages of whiskey, uh, the distillery itself, a lot of people, notice they don't have an age statement on this whiskey, okay? And um, that's mostly because of how young it is. Why bother talking about it, especially putting an age on a single malt whiskey um when it's so young the distillery itself didn't start until 2005 they didn't start producing whiskey until 2006 okay um and i believe just 2008 or between 2008 2010 they finally started releasing some whiskeys but already it was getting a lot of acclaim from people in 2012 jim murray who i talked about in previous reviews uh jim murray the famous and somewhat controversial whiskey reviewer named the Fino Sherry, um, the single malt of the year, I believe. And then uh, just this previous, this year, actually, 2015, um, hopefully I uh, upload this video before 2015 ends. But anyway, 2015, it won the World Whiskey Awards uh, award for single malt of the year over all other whiskeys. And of course, just like the Yamazaki did uh, for Mr. Murray, um, this caused controversy everywhere. Oh, now a Taiwanese whiskey is the greatest in the world. What are you doing, Scotland? Come on, catch up. He's just kicking your butt. But, you know, um, Jim Murray's a somewhat more controversial author, like I've said, but the World Whiskey Awards are a lot more acclaimed to many whiskey aficionados. You know, it depends who you are. Um, but... Cavalon won in a blind tasting. You know, Mr. Murray does uh, does not do bl the blind tastings for his books, but um, the World Whiskey Awards were blind tastings, and they, they kicked major butt there. But even prior to that, the malt maniacs, who are one of the top sources for especially single malts throughout the world, but whiskeys in general, uh, they do blind tastings every year, and Cavalon is smart enough. You know, it's one of those awards there that they don't taste every whiskey well, they might. They, they taste a lot of whiskeys. But for the awards, they don't taste every whiskey from the year. They just taste what were, um, you know, uh, entered into the contest, basically. And uh, and Kavalon's smart enough to enter into important competitions like that. Even though they're not an official, you know, the Malt Maniacs are not an official association or anything as far as uh, a business or anything. Um, everybody looks up to them in the whiskey world. They have a huge pedigree and heritage, I should say, in the whiskey world. And especially the sherry casks, they usually give huge high ratings to. Um, this is not the sherry cask. I love the sherry casks because they're like pitch black. They're so dark. They're the most amazing looking whiskey you can see. Um, you know, this one, this one has a very nice color to it, but it's not quite like those. Anyway... The Vino Barrique is getting all the attention right now just because it won the World Whiskey Awards, which is more publicized, uh, obviously, because that is an official competition. Um, now, the thing people don't realize with these, and, you know, whiskey aficionados do, of course, is, you know, these are single casks. So it has the cask number stated specifically on the bottle. They're not all the same. They try to get them similar, but they are not at all, you know, they're not guaranteed to be always the same type of cask. Um, when it won the awards, right away, everybody, all the people, all the experts were like, which cask number which was it? Which cask number was it? Which, you know, everybody was going crazy. 
Uh, unlike bourbon, where bourbon has to always be aged in fresh oak, it's easier to get a similar taste profile uh, for the barrels, but even that varies, you know. But um, when it comes to single malts and stuff like that that use used barrels from all over the world, whether it be wine industries or, you know, the bourbon industry, they buy used barrels. Um, you could get two, you know, and I always I keep using the term barrels, but they're casks, okay? Cask. This was a vino barrique cask. It, it, a barrique is a different size than a barrel. I've talked about that before. But anyway, um, you know, you no two are ever the same. You can... You can put whiskey in two barrels on the same day from the same distillate and age it for the same amount of years and they could come out completely different in color and in flavor profile and everything. It's amazing, okay? As I always say, whiskey is an in is you know, an inconsistent product by nature. So um uh, you know, it's hard to get the same flavor profile all the time. So these these Vino Breaks, even though it won the, um, you know, award for the single malt of the year, they're all going to be a little bit different. And I've had some, you know, I've had many different Cavalons, many different casks, and uh, they all vary a little bit. They're all excellent, though. It's amazing for how young they are. Um, and with that, I'm going to get into this a bit, Okay. Uh, I'm going to rush this review bit. We're going to try to make these shorter. For one thing, editing is a pain in the butt um, when they're really long. And also, you're, you guys probably get really bored. Like, you're probably already asleep right now if you didn't already skip to this part. But um, we're going to try this particular cask. This cask is uh, the W09022003. And this is bottle number 127 out of 180. The bottle number is almost basically make no difference at all. Uh, it's just nice that they're so clear about it. Um, but uh, in this, uh, there's a date on the back, 2014, uh, 321, so March 21st, 2014. That's typically the bottling date, of course. It even has the time, 1138, okay? Now this one was purchased in America, or the United States to be specific, I shouldn't generalize. Um, I'm not sure what countries this was all distributed to. Since there weren't many bottles, this might be America, you know, this hemisphere exclusively. It could be United States exclusively. Um, I'm not going to take the effort to do all that research. Um, all the true whiskey geeks can uh, take a shot at that if you want to. Okay. Um, as always, I'm not a big color person. Single malts especially can get color added. I don't know Taiwan's rules. Uh, that's another thing I'm going to look into now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but it's got a very nice color due to the wine casks, or do the wine cask, I should say. This is a single cask, a vino, uh, a barrique cask. Uh, getting some prune juice here. Okay. Some honey and lemongrass. Um, that's interesting, like a candied licorice I'm getting. And like many other, like some of the other vino bariques I've had, I'm getting a mango flavor. Okay, and some cough syrup as well. Uh, there's also some, let's see, there's some nuttiness, it's kind of like a walnut. And, uh... Overall, it's just got a potpourri floral flavor to it, but extremely fruity. But it's got so much complexity. It's amazing for its young age. You know, and this this always depends on the region. You know, Kentucky ages things quicker. You don't typically want a bourbon more than 20 to 23 years old. 25, typically the max, but it varies. There, some 30-year-olds get released, like the Michter Celebration, stuff like that. But you can't age it very long. Whereas Scotland, you could age it... 60, 70 years. Part of it depends on the casks. Again, Scotland, they use used casks. They could use it two, three, four times, whatever, till the cask disintegrates. Um, that'd be kind of, you know, uh, pretty bad for the company if the cask disintegrated, but you know what I mean. Um, and, uh, but, you know, bourbon's always fresh oak. Um, I'm not sure the Taiwanese rules. Okay, let's, let's do the palate. You gotta stop sniffing this. Drink it, enjoy it. Hits you full of flavor. Okay, this is now this is fifty-seven point eight percent ABV. 
Okay. Um, the proof is double that. I'm, I'm not going to do the calculations in my head for the most part. Um, Got kind of dry bitterness. That's kind of more in the finish, but those for the most part, it's really zesty. Um, I'm getting the prune juice and the nuts again. Those are coming in strong, especially the prune juice. I'm getting some leather now. I'm getting some leather and uh, and again, the mango and the touches of cough syrup throughout. Um, there's also hints of candied truffles. And champagne. Not the bubbliness, of course, but you get that flavor of champagne in the back. It's all a, a nice combination of very complex fruits and, um, again, hints of leather and stuff like that. And then you get that um, champagne quality to it and, and uh, some of those some of those nicer whiny notes. Um, very, 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 very nice. Very fascinating. My gosh. And this stuff just gets better with time. You know, when you first open it, it's not balanced at all, in my opinion, this particular cask. And then the more you let it oxidize, the, the more complex it gets to, to a certain breaking point. And adding water, though, is tricky. It's really tricky all around. This one. I'm not adding water in this video, uh, just because I forgot to bring the water with me and experience it more. But, you know, I've already done in-depth tasting notes. I already put a review online a while back, but... I just want to revisit it and do a video review because not everybody checks Wisconsin.com. You should, though. Um, but you know what? Whatever. Uh, I understand. People don't like reading. They just want video reviews. And they like to see the pretty bottles. Um, this finish, I got to say already, I can already just tell you without taking more sips. But I want to take more sips because I like it. Um, it is long. It is a nice, long finish. And it's fruity and spicy again. I'm getting some bitter citrus rinds, but you know, again, the more it, the more it oxidizes, the sweeter it is. I remember this being a bit more bitter before, and it's just long and sweet now. Let this sucker, let this sucker breathe, folks. Okay, if people don't realize whiskey sometimes needs to breathe. Uh, it doesn't change quite as much or as easily as wine and some other, you know, uh, beverages, but it definitely changes. Okay, this is very nice. Okay, I'm loving this. I want to talk about it more and more, but I'm going to cut this video short because you don't just need to see me sitting here enjoying this whiskey, especially when you're not drinking it right now. If you could find the Cavillons, get them. I will say this, though, folks. Right now, they're really hard to find, but that's because they're new and because they became super successful really quickly, okay? But they are expanding production as we speak massively. And they're going to be producing, they're going to be expanding the sherry range, okay? Um, so the Fino and the, uh, you know, the standard, the sherry cask and stuff like that. They're going to be doing, um, uh, let's see, I believe, you know, PX casks. Uh, that's Pedro Jimenez. And then Amontillado, um, Madeira. Uh, they're going to be doing some other finishes, okay? So be ready for that. Um, pretty soon, I believe they're being re released as we speak right now in Taiwan, and they'll be ready Christmas time, uh, or the new year, I should say, in Europe and uh, the Americas and throughout the rest of the world. So get ready for those folks. You know, I definitely recommend any Kavlan. They're really expensive. Um, you know, they range between 100 to 300, actually 100 to 400 United, you know, US dollars. Um, this one, I believe, is around 150-ish range, 160. The Sherry Casks, which are the more sought after, uh, even though this one, the awards, the Sherry Casks are the one that get the acclaim from, you know, because they're so cool, look, they're super dark, but also they get the acclaim from the malt maniacs and a lot of the, the true, you know, hardcore single malt drinkers and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, they're coming out with more stuff soon. Keep an eye out. This is a great up-and-coming company. I think it's worth the money, barely. Okay, some of the stuff, I I love the Fino. Uh, Fino is one of my favorites um, of the few I've had. I've, I haven't had as many of those as I've had as these other ones. Um, 
But the Fino is superb, but man, that's a pricey one. I don't think I'd pay that price for a bottle, but I love drinking it in bars and drinking samples from from uh, from people. But um, the uh, what's weird is the ex bourbon casks is are typically my favorites, uh, and that's not just because I'm American, but um, but everybody varies, you know. Everybody's palate's stiffer. Try them all. Try them, and I can't wait to try the new casks coming out soon. The new uh, lineup. So keep an eye out for those. Um, you know, uh, the one problem I have with this is that it's, um, it was tricky with its balance, you know. Uh, I'm loving it right now, but, you know, it was so hard to find a balance, and it's still not perfectly balanced. And even though it wows me, it's not something I want to hurry and tell everybody about. I am giving this um, an 8.9 out of 10, okay? And, you know, that falls in line with some of the other uh, of the Fino, um, or I'm sorry, of the Vino Barique. I'm getting them mixed up now. Uh, of the other Vino Barique casks I've had. And uh, there's something about the Vino Barique. You know, the X Bourbon and the uh, Sherry Cask ones have jumped to the 9.0. And I haven't reviewed all of them. I haven't been able to take tasting notes, sadly, on all of them. Some of them you can find on Wiscassi.com. Go there now, Wiscassi.com. Uh, but other ones I haven't been able to take notes on. Uh, because just in the time and environment that I'm in. But, you know, the, the sherry casks and the ex-bourbon casks, I adore. And especially the ex-bourbon casks, they get underrated a lot. I love those. Um, but this one, 8.9 out of 10, and that's that falls in line pretty much with all, with the other Vino Breaks I've had. And again, it's finding that balance, you know? Some people might love this to death. Um, obviously it won awards, it's great, it's excellent stuff. Like I said, as it oxidizes, as it, it give it time, folks, and it just gets better and better. Uh, but it still doesn't quite hit my 9.0 region, okay? Um, but it's, it's a darn good whiskey, it's excellent, it's, it's worth the money, like I said, barely worth the money in my opinion because it's so expensive, but it is worth the money. If you can find it, grab it up. Great, unique conversation starter for your parties. Like, this is from Taiwan. This, and they're like, what? Like, I just started to understand that Jap Japan makes whiskey. Now you're saying Taiwan does? Just, you just blew my mind. Like, I am not ready for this world of whiskey we're getting into. Anyway, folks, thanks as always for joining. Uh, I definitely appreciate your, your viewership. And um, as always, I want you to enjoy your whiskey. And I will, as always, enjoy my whiskey. Take care. See you next time. Thanks again for watching.